What do you think? Henry is about to marry. What? Seriously? I had no idea, but that's great news for him. Congratulations to him. But I have a feeling it's a little early. He's still quite young. Right? In contrast to your useless self. You're approaching 30 and still can't find a girl to marry. Marriage is not required for a happy existence. Besides, don't you think the term useless goes a little too far? That's a pitiful reason. And you're very useless in comparison to Henry. You didn't even attend college, and now you're stuck with a low-wage minimum wage job. Can you please stop saying that? I'm not a low-class person because I work in a factory. It isn't even the minimum pay but it's a lousy job. At least Henry is attending college. As a result, he is already more successful than you could ever be. Isn't he even working full-time? He has a part-time job. He's going to establish his own business. That's what he told me the other day. So, if he worked full-time, he wouldn't have time to arrange things. Are you certain about that? I believe he should have attempted to save some money ahead of time. He's all right. He is still quite young. He's getting married, and I'm confident he'll be bringing me my first grandchild shortly. He's a wonderful son. He is everything I dreamed for and more. Unlike someone. Are you referring to me? Who else would I be referring to? I have only two sons. I'm not sure what you're saying but I've been assisting you in my own manner as well. I've been sending you $1,000 every month for the last 10 years. That's how Henry was able to attend college in the first place. Why are you behaving as if $1,000 is a large sum of money? $1,000 is nothing to you. Are you serious? I began working at the age of 20 and have been giving it to you every month since. I couldn't afford to take care of myself at first, but I kept sending money to you. I also sent money to Henry when he was in middle school. To be honest, I don't care about that anymore. It is still important to me. That's a lot of money I'll never see again. Henry stated that his fiancée is the daughter of a well-to-do family. Is this true? That's wonderful. Henry is fantastic. I'm overjoyed for him. He is all a mother could ask for. He claims to be arranging a spectacular wedding as well. I couldn't really expect anything less from him. He is, after all, my son. I'm thrilled for Henry, but in case you didn't know, I'm also your son. I did not inquire. Please refrain from bringing up irrelevant topics. In any case, he's marrying a girl from an affluent family. Oh, and please don't attend the wedding. What precisely do you mean? I have no idea where that came from. I wish to attend my younger brother's wedding. As I have stated, you are uneducated. That is embarrassing. I don't want to be seen in your presence. It would be extremely embarrassing if guests at the wedding discovered you were my son. Henry is my sole child, as far as they are aware. You still refer to me as uneducated? I knew you didn't like where I worked, but do you have to look at me like that? His fiancé is unlikely to care where I work. It's also not that horrible. You're just biased. She might not be concerned, but I am. The last thing I want is for you to throw the family name into disrepute in such a prominent position. There will be a large number of people present, including her parents. Are you sure? What am I doing to bring shame to my family? At the very least, I'm employed. Stop being so self-important. I'm always dead serious. Factory work is filthy and disgusting. Why couldn't you get a job as a manager somewhere? Are you not thankful for what I've done for you? In addition to the money, I would help you pay your bills. Why should I be grateful? I don't recall you ever caring for me. Stop acting all haughty because the money you sent every month barely covered the cost of groceries. It appears that you have lost interest in me. Not that you ever did. I'll reconsider attending the wedding. I'll need to speak with Henry about that. There is nothing to say. 
I've already instructed you not to come. What's so difficult to grasp about that? I never imagined my mother would tell me not to attend my brother's wedding. We were supposed to be a family, I thought. So, you're planning a wedding? Mom just informed me. Congrats! This must be quite exciting for you. The news spread quickly. I intended to surprise you with an invitation card. You didn't have to surprise me. But if you're going to send me an invitation card, you must be planning to invite me, right? What? Of course, you're invited. You're my brother. I'd want to see you there. That's good to hear, but my mother has informed me that she does not want me to come. Working in a factory, perhaps, would bring shame to the family. So, I suppose she has a point. To be honest, working in a factory isn't the best job there is. I'd be embarrassed to say I worked there. You're on her side. Come on, I didn't believe you'd agree with her. But, in any case, are you set financially for the wedding? Why do you care? Are you going to have your fiancé utilize her family's money? I realize you can't afford a lavish wedding. Is mom aware of this? Don't be concerned about it. I'm confident that I'll figure it out. What is it? What about your fiancé's reaction? That is a significant financial load for her and her family. I don't think it's that difficult. She is also unable to pay for it. What precisely do you mean? You aren't the one getting married, therefore you don't have to be concerned. Will you ever marry? Don't forget about the gift money, by the way. I'm hoping for the best. What? I'd like you to offer me a large sum of money as a gift. Despite the fact that you work in a factory, I know you can afford it. Could you perhaps donate some money to your only younger brother? You can, right? You definitely will. I mean, I was going to bring you some money as a gift in the first place. But my mother warned me not to come, so... To be honest, you can brush that aside and ignore her. You know she's the type of person that says whatever she wants. She appears to be able to think whatever she wants. I think she has the wrong impression of you. I suppose so, but in the end, it's irrelevant to me. Allow her to think what she wants. In any case, remember to bring my gift money. I don't have many friends or co-workers who can bring me things. I may also ask a number of our family to contribute to my wedding fund. Do you think that's correct? Are you really okay with throwing your wedding using money borrowed from relatives? I believe you should not attempt to toss anything out of your reach. Small weddings can also be very wonderful. Keep in mind the gift money. Are you even paying attention? I'm sure mom won't appreciate you begging our relatives for money. Henry's wedding is tomorrow. You're not coming, are you? You should not come. Why do you keep bringing this up? I accepted Henry's invitation, so I'll be there. He'd be upset if I didn't go. It's his wedding, so I don't see why you should have any say in who attends or does not attend. Please excuse me? You're not paying attention to what I'm saying, are you? I told you you couldn't come. What a rebellious young man you are. Even if you keep telling me that I can't just show there and not do anything. As I already stated, he would be furious. How many times do I have to tell you how much you shame our family? You indicate a low-wage minimum wage job. You're single. You don't even own a house. Never show me your face again. And please don't tell anyone we're related. Do you truly disregard everything I've done for you over the last 10 years? I've made numerous sacrifices for this family. And all that matters to you is your image. Oh, yes. What does it matter? It appears that I have squandered both my time and money. I wasted so much time mailing money to someone who didn't even acknowledge it. Everything you accomplish is a waste since you're such an inept man. You can't even find work. I no longer regard you as my son. You are nothing more than a useless piece of trash. Okay. I get what you mean. I don't recall the pocket change you always send over being particularly useful. 
as if a thousand dollars were capable of accomplishing anything. It's humiliating for you because you're just a little class factory worker. You should not attend your brother's wedding. I won't. I'm also breaking ties with you. Whatever. So we're strangers from now on. I'm not going to the wedding, so relax. Thank God. Don't ever speak to me again, Silas. Gladly. I also don't want you to talk to me. Tell Henry the first said congratulations. Henry is visibly unhappy. What is the issue? What? I thought I told you I didn't want to talk to you anymore. He became enraged when I informed him that you would not be attending the wedding. Why would he be upset? Isn't it self-evident that you shouldn't come? Isn't he also embarrassed? What do you want from me? It doesn't matter, because Henry obviously wanted me to come. But, as you expected, I will not. That's something I've previously told him. If he's upset, it's your fault. I'll also cease sending you money. What? You are going to stop? Why would you do that? Obviously. Isn't it you would wish to sever ties? That implies I have no obligation to send you any money. Isn't this what you were hoping for? We don't need to prolong this discussion. What do you mean you're not going to spend the money? I don't recall ever stating you could. You are not required to tell me what I am or am not capable of doing. I said it because I wanted to aid my family. But we're no longer family because you severed our relationships. I have no plans to send you anything. That should have been obvious. You have no right to talk to your own mother in that manner. Oh, you want to act as though we're family now? As previously said, you are the one who severed ties. This was to be expected. I was meant to give Henry a present, but since I'm not going to the wedding, I'm not doing so. That is most likely why he is unhappy. What exactly is it? What does that have to do with anything? If I do not give him the gift money, he will most likely be unable to pay for the wedding venue. What are you talking about? I've loaned him a substantial sum of money, but he has yet to repay any of it. I intended to make this money gift to him the last time I sent him anything, so I would send him a higher sum than normal. But, however, it appears that I won't have to worry about it now that I won't be attending the wedding. I'm not required to give him anything. Wait a minute. Why is Henry so reliant on your money? Isn't he marrying a wealthy woman? He doesn't require your idiotic present. His fiancée's family appears to have already disowned her. What did you say? She was apparently abusing her parents' money, so they kicked her out. But I believe she assumed they'd forgive her in the end, so she wasn't too concerned. She invited them to the wedding and is presumably hoping to reconcile with them. If that's the case, there shouldn't be any issues, right? There is an issue. What exactly is it? It means he can't rely on his fiancée's parents for financial support. Especially not for the wedding. Because his fiancée was evicted for spending her parents' money. Her parents would never pay for her wedding. Does it make sense to you yet? She won't be able to obtain financial support from her family, which is why Henry asked me to give him a huge sum of money. His savings account is completely depleted. His fiancée is unemployed and does not have her own money. Really? But isn't he working? Why is he in such predicament? Yes, he works, although it is only a part-time job. He's been talking about creating his own company, but it's all just talk. Don't you see? What exactly do you mean? He attended college, although he missed the majority of his classes. You're probably aware that he dropped out in his second year. What? That's insane. He was scheduled to graduate the next year. That is why he hasn't been able to find a full-time work. Another explanation is that he hasn't been trying, so he's been sitting at home playing video games. He doesn't appear to be attempting to leave on his own, does he? That is not possible. That isn't feasible. Henry would never do that. You can try to deny it all you want, but it won't change the facts. By whining to me about it, nothing will change. Why not ask him? 
I can't believe Henry was like that. My Henry. I assumed he was a good student. He didn't finish college? Good students? In middle school, perhaps. In college, all he did was go to parties and miss classes. Anyway, the reason he's furious now is that he was supposed to obtain money from me, but he can't because I'm not there. And it's entirely your fault. I think it's about time you realized how selfish he's become. I refuse to believe it. You can believe it or not. Instead of being concerned about him, you should be concerned about yourself. What? You won't be able to pay off the house debt any longer. You've been referring to the thousand bucks I've been providing as pocket change, but you genuinely need it. Did you ever consider it? You did not. Because you were too preoccupied with Henry to notice anything else. I guess I hadn't considered that. I assumed Henry would marry into a wealthy family, so everything would be fine. Isn't that unfortunate? He will not be able to pay for the house on his own. I don't know or care what you intend to do next, but it appears that you've screwed yourself by severing relations with me. You brought it on yourself. Okay, then. I'll pardon you. You're welcome to attend the wedding. No way. What? You're not going to come? Seriously? No, I do not. You and Henry are both strangers to me. You're both so self-centered. Go to hell. Congratulations, both of you. After that, Oriana kept messaging her son Silas in a panic, but he hasn't responded to her at all. His younger brother, Henry, similarly had few attendees at his wedding. Because he did not set up a payment plan for the wedding, it had to be cancelled on the day of the event. Henry was distraught. He blew up on Oriana and demanded recompense, and after draining all of her savings from her, he severed connections with her. Silas, on the other hand, severed relations with both Oriana and Henry and was able to secure a nice apartment with the money he was now free to spend however he pleased. Henry was unable to hold the wedding, and he had regular arguments with his wife, which resulted in a divorce. He couldn't return to live with his mother, so he had nowhere to go. He was perplexed. Oriana was also forced to begin working in order to meet her living expenses. Hey, I noticed that you recently made a call. Was it something significant this time? Listen, I'm swamped with work at the moment. I can't spare time for every minor phone conversation. It had better hold significance. No, it's not particularly significant. I simply wanted to inquire about your well-being. You've been putting in so much effort, and I can imagine it's having an impact on you. I have a lot going on at the moment. Yeah? And, what are you doing? I'm just occupied, Hari. Just busy, huh? What would you like me to say? Even messaging you at the moment is distracting me from my work. Every interruption hampers my concentration. Well, I apologize, but it seems like we rarely have conversations these days. Is there a more suitable time for me to reach out and have a call with you? When will you be finished with work today? I won't be available to reconnect tonight as I'll be working late, possibly past midnight. You need to understand the challenges I'm facing, Hari. All right, how about your day off? Can we connect on Saturday or Sunday? I'm not sure if I'll be available on the weekend. I'll inform you once I know, all right? You don't know? You seem frustrated with my persistence. I apologize if it bothers you. I will wait for you to let me know when you have more information. I apologize, Tom. I just wanted to express my desire for more conversation. It would be nice if we could find time to talk. All right. Please inform me when you have the information. Goodbye. Hari, I have something important to discuss with you. Oh, Tom. Hello. Yes, absolutely. What's on your mind? I've been reflecting quite a bit recently. About our relationship, our circumstances, and everything in between. Yeah, and? To be honest, I've been experiencing uncertainties about our relationship for some time now. Doubts? What kind of doubts? 
What I mean is that I've been questioning whether we are truly compatible and if our relationship has a strong foundation for the future. What? This came out of nowhere. Why didn't you tell me you were having these feelings before? We could have talked about it in person when we were still living together. Regardless of the challenges we may be facing, I believe that we can overcome them together. I have faith in our ability to work through any issues and find a resolution. Hurry! I want a divorce! A divorce? Yes, I believe it would be in our best interest. I have dedicated considerable time and thought to this matter, and reaching this decision has been far from easy. Hmm. Okay then. That's fine! Um, excuse me. I wonder where we would do it. I guess at the city hall, right? That's usually where you do these sorts of things. Given our current situation being apart, it might be more efficient to expedite the process by submitting the necessary forms remotely. Yeah, that's right. If we both just send the form in, we can do this without even having to meet, right? That would be the best way. Um, Ari! You did hear what I said, right? Yeah. You want a divorce. I heard you. Why are you suddenly so enthusiastic about this? Have you actually taken the time to consider the implications and consequences of this decision? I know I came to this decision after a long time, but... It seems like you're totally fine with it. It's what you want, isn't it? I respect that. If it's what you want then, there's no other choice, right? Well, I know, but still! I'm just surprised about how okay with it you are. Like, no part of you wants to try and persuade me to change my mind? Remember, we're a married couple! You can't make such a hasty decision without proper consideration and discussion. I don't get it. You said let's get a divorce and I was just trying to honor your decision. I completely accept it. What's so strange about that? Haha. <laughs> well, I guess there's nothing wrong then. Great. All right, let's begin by handling the necessary paperwork. I'll take care of my part, and you can do the same on your end. Ah, okay. Are you sure it's okay? You don't want to hear what I have to say first? No, you don't need to explain it, I get it. This is what you want so it's best to get it moving without dwelling on it for too long. Yeah, but Hari, you haven't worked for a couple years, right? Are you really gonna be okay, like, money-wise and everything? I just want to check that side of thin at least. Oh, I have some savings. And I should be able to return to my old company. I'll have to ask them but, I'm sure it'll be okay. So, are you telling me that you've already been planning for this? It's like you knew it was gonna happen. It's always smart to be prepared for these kinds of things, you know? That way I don't run into any big trouble. Also, it makes everything smoother for you too, right? Well, I guess so, but... I'm kinda having second thoughts after talking about this with you. Oh. Don't worry about me. It's really fine. I'm not gonna hold you back from doing what you want. Go for it. Hurry, don't you think you're reacting to this a bit strangely? Like, it almost seems as if you're kind of excited or something. We were you waiting for me to bring this up? Yeah, of course I'm kind of excited. Ah! Tom, I get it. You've probably wanted a divorce for a while. I'm fine with giving you what you want. Anyway, I'll get all those documents and send them right over. Time is of the essence. Okay! Hari, what's going on? Just to let you know, I haven't submitted the papers for the divorce. I thought we could still talk about it, but it seems like my parents already know about this somehow. Do you have any idea how they found out about that? Oh, of course they know. I submitted the papers myself. After that I let them know what was going on. What? Don't you think you should have run that past me before you talked to my parents? And I didn't fill anything out. You can't just submit one side of the papers for this type of thing, can you? 
Oh, right. I remember that intense argument we had a few months ago when you were visiting. It was during that time that you completed your portion of the paperwork. You even said that if things get bad they're ready to submit. So I just used those ones. I hope that's okay. Okay? What the hell, Hari? Those papers weren't supposed to be submitted without my permission. What's gonna happen now? Are we really getting divorced? Hmm. It seems that way, doesn't it? Why would you do something like that behind my back? What do you mean? I simply handed in the paperwork that you had already completed. Naturally, I also completed my portion of the forms. And I don't get why you're so confused. You were the one who brought it up in the first place. Were you not being serious when you said that? Well, I was the one who brought it up, but... I didn't actually expect it to progress this swiftly. I thought there was a possibility for us to have a discussion and find a compromise, but you took action without considering that. I assumed that was your intention. And I had to tell your parents. They've looked after me so much over the years, so I really owed it to them to at least let them know. Can you imagine not telling them? Haha. <laughs> if we were ready to get divorced then, yeah, I think we would need to talk to them too. But I didn't believe we had reached that stage yet. Why did you accelerate the situation by taking such action? What purpose does waiting serve if we have both reached an agreement on the matter? Is it not true that endlessly deliberating and contemplating over a matter is a significant squandering of time? What the hell, Hari? Why'd you have to tell them? Now it's gonna be near impossible to give them a reasonable explanation when we get back together. Get back together? Yeah, and we will. We just need to continue working on our differences and we'll be fine. I know it. Oh, but Tom, it's far too late for that. Oh, Tom, but it's too late for such considerations now. Besides, your parents appeared quite receptive to the idea. When I informed them, they even inquired if I was planning to tie the knot. Can you believe it? Ha <laughs> ha. They said they were rooting for me to find someone good after the two of us didn't work out. You do have really kind parents, Tom. My parents said that? Are you serious? Oh my goodness, Hari. How did everything escalate so quickly? I never even had the intention of seeking a divorce. I know I might have said it once or twice in the past, but at the end of the day, it's not something I want. Oh yeah. Then why would you say it? Okay, I'll level with you but promise not to judge me, okay? No judgment over here. Go ahead. Well, to tell you the truth, there's a lot of single guys at my company right now. You see, after hiring season, three new guys just started. We go out for beers and they talk about their single life and I felt a bit jealous. They're all in their 20s fresh out of university, living the life. There's this guy named Jake, and he's quite an interesting individual. He's really into fitness, drives a pickup truck, and has a whole lot going on. So, one night, I went out with Jake, and we started having a conversation. During our conversation, Jake mentioned that one of the girls in our office has feelings for me. Let me clarify, I would never entertain the thought of cheating, but I must admit, the idea left me feeling quite perplexed. I couldn't help but wonder how a stunning woman in her 20s would be interested in someone like me, a salesman in his mid-30s. What does this have to do with anything? Hold on, I'll get to it. Anyway this girl actually joins me and Jake at the bar. We start having drinks things are going well and then, Jake tells me something. What did he say? He casually mentioned, Tom, imagine the kind of attention you'd get if you were single. You'd be a hit out here, or something along those lines. God. How pathetic. Getting swooned by compliments from a 20-year-old, huh? I didn't even get to the most important part yet. That female coworker was coming onto me, like, hard. But, I said no, I'm married. I thought of you, Hari. I thought of everything we've been through. I thought, I would never give that up for some stupid fling. So, that's the only reason why I said those things. I was just getting carried away in the moment, caught up in my youthful mindset. It was just a foolish illusion. I was paying too much attention to my co-workers' opinions, 
when I should have been trusting my own judgment. But I've snapped out of it now. I'm here for you, and I want to make this work. Oh, isn't that a sweet story? It doesn't seem like you're all that committed if you're getting all jealous of your single work buddies. And sharing that your coworker was showing interest in you didn't exactly boost my confidence in our relationship. Hari, that's what I'm saying. Even with all that, I didn't budge. I'd never do that to you can trust me. Sorry Tom, it doesn't matter. I've already filed the paperwork. The process has started. Hari, listen. I didn't mean to say we should get divorced. I'm sorry for making you think that. And I'm sorry for writing up the divorce papers that time. I never meant to send them off. I just felt in the moment I should have them ready, just in case. Hari, I'm sorry. You've got to take back the divorce papers that you sent. Any way you can, try to stop the process. We can still work this out, I know it. Like I said, it's too late. Besides, I know what you did. Huh? What are you saying? I know about the other woman, Tom. And I know that you can't go back to her anymore, so... You came back to me. Ha ha. Not the smartest play in the book. What? Are you kidding me? What other woman are you talking about? This is some kind of sick misunderstanding. Hurry! Tell me what you heard. I'll just prove it. It's true, Tom. I know it. I have sources. Sources? Who the hell would start that kind of vicious rumor about me? Tell me, who was it? Just sources. Anyway, the woman you were seeing apparently got pregnant. With your kid. Oh yeah, and she's married. Then, when she came to you with the news, you ran away, avoiding all responsibility. A real class act if I do say so myself. You've got it twisted! That's not even close to the real story! None of that was my fault! Not your fault? So you're admitting to it? Listen, I may have made some mistakes in the past, but those things are not relevant anymore. If you really knew the whole story, I know you would side with me on this. Honestly, it's nothing but a big misunderstanding. I love you, Hari. I can make it better, I promise. You still love me too, right? Hmm. I don't really feel anything anymore. What? How could you say that after all we've been through? Oh, Tom, the past is the past. Why does it matter anymore? But now that I know what went down, I'm actually glad I found out who you really are. Just think about what would have happened if I had continued pretending that everything was fine. I'm actually relieved that I found out the truth. Seriously, Hari! Who told you these baseless rumors? Oh! I texted Caitlin! God damn it! How did you get her number? Remember when I used your phone to make a call outside the restaurant we visited? It wasn't hard to open a few texts and see the whole story. God! You were out there for a while! So, after discovering that you got Caitlin pregnant and attempted to sever ties with her, I realized I had to uncover the truth. Hari! Do not trust that woman! She was crazy about me! She wouldn't stop calling me! She was obsessed! Haha. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I got her number from your phone and started texting her myself. Initially, when she discovered my identity, she adopted a more guarded stance. It seemed like she genuinely had feelings for you. She expressed her intention to snatch you away from me, proclaiming that she would leave me with nothing. And you listened to her? She's crazy! Hold on, hold on. I'm not even at the good part yet. After she tried to threaten me with that, I told her that I knew about the whole pregnancy thing involving you. She almost immediately changed her tone and started apologizing and begging me not to tell her husband. So, what did you do? Oh, wouldn't you love to know? 
Well, I had to track down her husband, Jack Trainer. After that, I told him the whole story. No way! How in the hell did you track down her husband? A friend of mine referred me to a private investigator. They were able to track down Caitlin's husband quite easily. Okay, fine. I admit there was some foul play, but why would you go and hire an investigator? How are you going to pay for all this? The cost of hiring one of them is not cheap. There's no way you can get divorced with me now. I'm all you've got. Oh, I'll be fine. I'm probably going to sell the house. Your parents have already agreed to transfer the ownership to me. Remember? It was actually them who footed the bill in the first place. Quite a generous gesture for their eldest son and his newlywed wife. Hold on! My parents gave you our house! Almost. Well, they're in the process of going over the paperwork now. There's no way! I'm calling them as soon as I can! I've got to stop this! I have to say, they were not very happy about your little affair with Caitlin. I wouldn't count on convincing them to change their mind. Hari, you can't do this. That house is all I have. Besides, I'm not gonna be in Pittsburgh much longer. I'll have nowhere to stay if I come back. You should have thought about that before you went and got a married woman pregnant and threatened to divorce your actual wife. You know what they say, though. Be careful what you wish for. Come on, hurry. That woman was cheating on her husband, too. It was just a huge mess. You can hardly blame me for what I did. Ah, oh, I almost forgot. I'm pretty sure that Mr. Trainer is out looking for you. I'm not certain, but I'm pretty sure he is preparing some legal action for incurring damages to his family. You did impregnate his wife, after all. You're not very smart, are you, Tom? What? He's coming after me? What do you mean? I'm pretty sure he's quite well off, too. So, if it does come down to a court case, it's not exactly good news for you. Hari, you put him up to this, didn't you? Why would you do that? Hey, I just wanted to make things right, okay? Besides, why the hell would I protect a pathetic, lying cheater like you? Give me one good reason, I'll wait. We are married. We love each other. These are reasons enough. Were. We were married. I'm not even sure if I truly loved you back then. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, it's over now. Goodbye Tom, you despicable person. Over the next few months, Hari successfully acquired the ownership of the house from Tom's family through a completely legal transfer of property. Tom went back to Lincoln, where his parents resided, and made sincere attempts to persuade them to reconsider their decision regarding the house. However, they had firmly decided and disapproved of Tom's actions to such an extent that they refused to grant the house rights to Hari, perceiving it as an act of desperation. Deprived of a place to call home, Tom found himself relying on the generosity of one of his young, unmarried colleagues, crashing on their couch night after night in their apartment. After some time, Tom overstayed his welcome, and his co-worker had to make the difficult decision of asking him to leave the apartment. Following that, he found himself staying in budget motels that attracted questionable individuals at all hours of the night. Regarding Mr. Trainer, Tom managed to resolve the dispute through an out-of-court settlement. However, this meant that he was now obligated to make monthly payments, accompanied by exorbitant interest rates in case he failed to meet the requirements. It was truly unfortunate. Hari managed to make a significant profit by selling the house that Tom's parents had transferred to her. This enabled her to move to a more desirable condo in a prime location near the city center. There, Hari contemplated the lost time with Tom, but ultimately felt a sense of relief for escaping the situation relatively unharmed. Hey, Melissa. How's everything going to Cali? It's going pretty well, Dad. I just finished my first year. That's great to hear. So, what's on your mind today? Well, I wanted to talk to you about my bank account. I have a hometown credit union account that you're a cosigner on, but I've been thinking about switching to a more convenient bank. 
Oh, really? What happened? Did something go wrong with your credit union account? No, not at all. I actually got a part-time job WHIE at school, and it made me realize that a different bank would be more convenient for me. Hmm, I see. Well, do you want me to co-sign on the new ACC as well? Actually, I was thinking about handling the ACC on my way own. I would like more financial independence. But Melissa, I'm your dad. I just want to help you out and make sure everything is taken care of. I appreciate that, Dad. But I'm an adult now, and I think I can handle my finances on my own. Plus, I don't think the reasons you provided for co-signing are valid. I'm 18 now, legally an adult, and I want to have more financial independence. I don't think it's necessary for you to co-sign on my new account. I can handle my finances on my own. I have a responsibility to ensure your financial well-being. It's not about control, it's about looking out for your best interests. Having a co-signer provides added security and accountability. I get that, Dad, but I've been managing my finances responsibly. I even got a part-time job to support myself. I just want the convenience of a bank that's closer to me and easier to access. I don't think it's necessary for you to be involved in every financial decision I make. Melissa, it's not about wanting to control your every move. It's about ensuring your financial stability and having a safety net. Life can be unpredictable, and having a cosigner can offer you protection and guidance when needed. Plus, if there are any emergencies or unexpected expenses, it's beneficial to have someone who can assist you. Does Dad have anything to hide from you? What are you saying? I understand that emergencies can happen, Dad, but I want to learn to handle those situations on my own. I believe I'm capable of making responsible decisions and managing my own finances. Co-signing on a new account feels like a step backward in my journey towards independence. I want what's best for you, and sometimes that means taking a cautious approach. I'm not trying to hinder your independence, I'm trying to be there for you when you need support. Let's find a middle ground where we can ensure your independence while still having some security measures in place. Dad, I appreciate your concern, but I really want to explore the possibility of having my own account without a cosigner. I want to take responsibility for my own financial decisions and learn from any mistakes that may arise. Can we please try to understand each other's perspectives and find a solution that works for both of us? Melissa, now that you've turned 18 and transitioned to an adult account at the credit union, I think it's important for me to co-sign on the account. I still help you with certain expenses like textbooks, and having my name on the account will make it easier for me to deposit money directly when needed. I appreciate your willingness to help, but I'm feeling a bit uncomfortable with the idea of you co-signing on my credit union account. I understand your reasons, but I also want to take more responsibility for managing my own finances and becoming independent. I understand your desire for independence, Melissa, but co-signing on your account is not about controlling your finances. It's about ensuring that I can provide financial support when necessary. I want to be able to help you quickly and efficiently, especially with expenses like textbooks, which can be quite costly. I see where you're coming from, Dad, and I appreciate your intention to support me. However, I feel that having you co-sign on my account may give the impression that I'm not capable of managing my own finances. I've been learning and growing in this area, and I believe I can handle it independently. It's not that I doubt your abilities, but I still want to play a role in assisting you financially. I know you're relatively new to managing your finances, and I want to be there for you as a safety net. Co-signing on the account doesn't mean I don't trust you, it's just an added layer of support. I've been thinking more about our conversation regarding co-signing on your credit union account. After doing some research, I realized that what I told you earlier about the need for co-signing and making deposits was not entirely accurate. Anyone can directly deposit money into your account, and there are other ways for me to provide financial support if necessary. Thank you for acknowledging that, Dad. I also did some research and found that as a co-signer, you would have certain privileges such as the ability to withdraw money from my account and view my transaction history. However, I prefer to have full control over my own finances and not have anyone else involved in those aspects. 
Okay, but just so you know, I was a little uncomfortable with the idea of you co-signing on my account at first. I understand that, but let me explain my reasoning. As you know, I've been helping you pay for things like textbooks and other expenses while you're in school. And since I'm depositing money into your account, I wanted to make sure that I could do it quickly and easily without any issues. Yeah, I remember you deposited money into my account once last year. I just want to make sure that you have everything you need to succeed in school and beyond. And having a solid financial foundation is a big part of that. Oh, really? What do you mean? It turns out that anyone can directly deposit money into your account, so there's no need for me to be a cosigner or make deposits on your behalf. I see. So what does being a cosigner actually allow you to do? As a cosigner, I would have access to view your transaction history and withdraw money from your account. Additionally, we would both share responsibility in case either of us is in a financial mess. I believe that having an account solely under my name will allow me to take full responsibility for my financial actions and decisions. It will also give me the freedom to manage my finances in a way that aligns with my goals and preferences. Actually, Dad, I appreciate the offer, but I really don't want your name linked to me financially at all. I'm trying to establish my own financial independence. What do you mean? I just want to help you out and make things easier for you. I know, and I appreciate that. But I want to be able to handle my finances on my own. Plus, I'm worried about the potential backlash if I suggest that I'm not financially independent. I understand where you're coming from, but I don't want you to struggle financially either. I used to make a lot more money than I do now, and your mom and I had to supplement our income by withdrawing from our retirement accounts. We're still doing okay, but it's tight. I appreciate your concern, Dad, but I'm actually doing okay financially too. I'm living with you guys over winter and summer breaks, but during the school year I have a part-time job and I'm managing my expenses pretty well. Listen, I wanted to talk to you about something important. We've been supporting you financially for a while now, but the truth is, we can't continue to do that indefinitely. At some point, the money will run out. I understand. And I don't want to be a financial burden on you either. That's good to hear. But there are also some privacy concerns that we need to address. As you know, your mother and I are strict and very religious. We homeschooled you for religious reasons and were accustomed to controlling almost every aspect of your life as a child and a teenager. But now that you're an adult, we need to respect your privacy and autonomy. But I have to be honest with you. I don't feel comfortable living under your roof anymore. I need my own space and independence. The joint account with the credit union on my Mint app, I can view every one of your transactions. I can observe your child's spending, money is not easy to come by. And even if you already have your job. But if I watch you, you will learn how to use your money correctly. Yeah, Dad, I've been using it and I can see all the transactions on my Mint app. But I don't want you snooping around unless you have a good reason to. I just want to make sure everything is going well with your finances. I'm not looking to find fault with your purchases, but if I do see something that concerns me, we should talk about it. I appreciate your concern, but I also value my privacy. I have things going on in my personal life that I need to keep private for my own safety right now, and having access to my financial information could jeopardize that safety. I understand that privacy is important, and I'll respect that. However, I also want to make sure that we have open communication about anything that might affect our shared finances. Of course, I want to be transparent about any financial matters that impact us both. But I also want to make sure that my personal privacy is respected. Well, I was hoping we could co-sign on another bank account together. Your mother and I are going through some financial instability right now, and we could really use your help. So this is what parents really mean when they want to share their children's accounts, right? Are you an adult and need help with family matters? I appreciate you coming to me for help, but I'm not sure if I'm comfortable co-signing on another account with you. Can you tell me more about why you need my help with this? It's just that we're struggling to make ends meet right now and we need some extra support. Plus, having a joint account would make it easier to manage our finances and keep track of everything. 
I understand where you're coming from, but I've been thinking about my own financial situation lately and I think it's time for me to start managing my own accounts separately from the family. What do you mean by that? We've always managed our finances as a family. I understand that, but I hope you can also understand where I'm coming from. Maybe we can work on finding a solution that works for both of us, like closing out the credit union account and setting up separate accounts for each of us. Let's stop this here and not discuss this further. Parents will continue to monitor their children's spending on the current credit card they are using. Dad! Dad, I just checked my account and found that all of my money is missing without any reason. And when I checked my debit card activity, I saw that you withdrew all the money without telling me. Why did you do that? Oh, that's just a normal thing, dear. I need your contribution to support our family. But why didn't you tell me before withdrawing the money? I feel very shocked not knowing why the money disappeared like that. I'm sorry about that, dear. But now you understand, right? We need to contribute money to support the family. I understand that, but I still feel uncomfortable because I wasn't informed beforehand. Of course, I'll try to inform you beforehand about the family's expenses. But currently, our family has plans to take out a loan to buy a house, and we need everyone in the family to contribute money. Under my name? That's correct, dear. We will borrow under your name for convenience in dealing with legal procedures. But of course, when we pay off the debt, I will return this amount to you. I can't agree to this, Dad. This is beyond my ability. I can't keep listening to unreasonable demands from you. I'm an adult. Dad, that's your and Mom's home loan. I'm not responsible for your excessive spending. But you have been provided with funds for education and now you are not even willing to support the family in this loan. Don't you see how selfish you are? So what about my living expenses that you gave me? You shouldn't be so selfish. I can send money to help pay off the debt, but I cannot have the loan under my name because it could affect my reputation in the future if I am unable to pay it back on time. It will be difficult for me to get a job with a loan under my name. Melissa, you are betraying the family. The family needs your support and you are not agreeing. I understand, but having a loan under my name is not the best solution. I will try to find another way to support the family. I don't believe you. You still don't understand the importance of family, do you? I understand the importance of family and will try to find a way to support them. But I cannot let it affect my reputation in the future. Melissa, I want to ask you a question. Do you think your reputation comes solely from the struggles of your family? I don't understand what you're trying to say. I think you've forgotten the most important thing in life which is family. How can you be so selfish and only think about yourself without helping your family when they're in need? Just standing as a guarantor for the debt doesn't mean you have to pay it back, but you refuse to help your family. I'm not being selfish, but I don't want to affect my future career prospects. If I stand as a guarantor for the debt, it could cause negative consequences for my life and career in the future. But don't you understand that family is also part of life and your success depends on their support? I hope you can rethink and consider supporting your family in all circumstances, not just when they need money but also when they need emotional support and care from you. Dad, why are you due to me? Do you want to interfere in my life again? Really? I just want to give you some advice. You live in my house, you are responsible for this. But you interfered with my religion, school choice, and financial decisions just to please mom and you. And now I need money for tuition, but you haven't been supporting me, so I have to work to pay for it. I understand how you feel, but you also need to understand that our family has spent a lot on your education. The money I took is just a small part that you must send back home. But I'll try to manage everything. You shouldn't take all of that money without asking for my opinion. Okay, I understand your opinion. I won't touch that money without asking for your opinion anymore. But I hope you understand that once you turn 18, it's time to give back to the family and pay off debts. I will work hard to pay off the debt and not let you worry about my finances anymore. You are a capable person in the family, 
We have invested you all the money, then you should help us with this. I took a loan of $25,000, and I invested it in a house recently. The plan was to sell it next year if the housing market stabilizes. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned, and the money is gone. What? $25,000 is a significant amount. Dad, how could you take such a loan without discussing it with me? This goes beyond my financial capabilities, and I can't possibly help you repay such a large sum. I apologize for not discussing it with you beforehand. I thought I was making a wise investment decision, but I underestimated the risks involved. I understand that it's a considerable burden for you, and I'm sorry for putting you in this situation. I have my own expenses and goals, and this unexpected debt will significantly impact my future plans. Can we explore other options or seek professional advice to manage this situation? Dad, don't you think this number is completely unrealistic for a student like me? Dad, let's live in reality, don't invest and receive failures all day long. Come on. I can help my parents with this, but just standing in my name will make it easier to breathe. This is the value you can contribute to this family. Don't scream like that all day. You won't agree to this. Dad can't always go his own way without consulting. This is not fair. I will switch to another consumer card without your presence in this account. What Dad did makes me feel extremely disappointed in what he did. Don't think that if you can do this, you can still use your guardian's rights to limit your finances. Dad. Let's stop the conversation here. You've let me down. Melissa, why did you change to a different payment card without informing me? I can't believe you would take control of your own money like this. Dad, I've had enough. I don't want to be controlled by anyone when it comes to my finances. I need financial independence. I'm just trying to help you, and I request that you use the card I provided for you. It's part of how I support your expenses. No, I don't want to listen to nonsense from you anymore. I refuse, Dad. I don't want to hear any more unreasonable requests from you. I am grown up now and capable of managing my own finances. Don't speak like that, Melissa. This isn't nonsense. I'm your father, and I have a right to look after your finances. I always try to do what's best for the family and help you. I made investments to provide a better life for our family. Dad, you always spend money in the house squandering it, and when you randomly invest, you never get a return on your investments. You always frivolously spend money and make reckless investments without any returns. I'm tired of these actions. I don't want to be controlled by unreliable decisions. How dare you say that? I'm trying to make smart investments for our family's future. That's enough, Melissa. I will use my authority as your father to make you listen to me. And I'm saying that I don't want to accept this anymore. You've already listened enough, and I won't let you control my money any longer. I refuse, Dad. I have listened enough, and I won't accept being controlled by you. I need freedom and the right to make my own financial decisions. As your father, I have every right to make sure you're making wise financial decisions. I have listened enough. I need freedom and independence in managing my finances. I won't accept this anymore. I understand that, but I'm an adult now, and I can make my own decisions. I appreciate your concern, but I need to do what's best for me. Fine, if that's how you feel, then I'll have to use my fatherly authority to make you listen to me. Dad, please don't do this. I love our family, but I need to be able to make my own choices. How dare you betray your family and refuse to help it? I won't refuse, but it won't be possible to put the loan in my name and I won't let my dad manipulate my finances now and in the future. I won't let you be at peace if you don't help the family. Ad, I don't want to hear this anymore, and I hope it doesn't ruin my future. You're being selfish, Melissa. We've done so much for you, and now it's your turn to contribute. It's not about being selfish, Dad. I want to focus on my own goals and aspirations. I can't be responsible for fixing all the family's financial issues. We sacrificed a lot for you, and we expect you to help us in return. It's your duty as a family member. 
I understand that you've made sacrifices, but I also have my own dreams and responsibilities. I can't carry the weight of everyone's financial burdens on my shoulders. Well, I won't stand for this, Melissa. You should prioritize the family's needs over your own desires. Dad, I'm not neglecting the family's needs, but I also need to take care of myself and build a stable future. I hope you can understand that. This is disappointing, Melissa. I thought I raised you to be more responsible and caring towards the family. Dad. I don't want that at all. Dad, please answer me. Dad didn't respond to all my messages. A week later I got a notification about the debt attached, but I refused and they yelled at me a lot. Then my parents cut off all my school fees. Although it was a bit difficult at first, thanks to my friends, I overcame it. But they blocked contact from me. Was this really right what I did?